if you click through to my profile, you'll be able to find the, the video feed so that you can see this. But this is an actual frustration that I'm having right now. And I just want to showcase how this process would work. So first we would do name the condition. And so the condition for me is our game dashboard uses a third party API that isn't working and we cannot fix it without their help. So this is deeply frustrating for me. And, and so what I would do is just list out how could you handle that? So I could talk to my dev team. I could open a ticket with Infura, which is the third party company. I could search the dev forums. I could make an announcement to my community that says we're assessing the situation. I could live stream and talk about the frustration live. So what I'm doing, if I've actually already enacted all of these things, but 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 what what I did when this first came up, it, and and because I'm so well versed in in this process, my brain just automatically goes into okay, these are the things that you could do in order to um, handle this, and then I can order whether or not it's a it's a these things are a good uh, good idea, but but. Um, what I want to do is keep returning to the condition until I can't think of any other thing that, that I could do. So if I go back to the condition of our game dashboard uses a third party API that isn't working and we can't fix it without their help. Well, how else could I handle that? Well, I, I can ask my dev team to look at the forums while I'm doing my live stream. Um, I, I, I can. Uh, hope and pray that that by working through the through this process that that's gonna somehow you you know positively affect the consciousness of somebody on the Infura dev team and they're gonna fix it on their end and everything will just magically work again. Um, I I can make sure that we figure out from Infura how to write a proper error backlog so so that in the future we'll know what's happening and we'll at least be able to give an updated report. Um, I we we can look into other third party API ser servers that that maybe don't have this type of problem. Um, we I I could just relax and and trust that you know my community understands that that sometimes tools don't don't always work and and that ultimately we're doing all of these things that that I'm saying and that we'll get things up and running a, as quickly as possible. Um, I could yell and scream. I could go for a run. I could punch my couch. I could swing a t-ball bat uh, uh, against um, uh, against a bag of trash. So what am I doing? As I'm saying all this stuff, a, a lot of the big feelings that I have about this frustration are coming to the surface. And, and in that expression, I'm allowing some of that energy to vent and transmute itself. And in many ways, I believe that the more that we get back to a place of emotional balance where, where something doesn't feel actively frustrating, that that is the biggest contribution we can give to reality rendering itself in a way that is alignment with the outcomes that we want. Ultimately, the outcome that I want is for my community to have a satisfying experience with the game dashboard. And, and, and so how do I serve that purpose? Well, I need to get into alignment with the fact that the game dashboard working is a possibility, that that we, we've had over 99% uptime, that that this too will pass, that, that the Infura team is one of the better teams in crypto and that they'll be able to resolve this on their end, that I'm not the only one opening a ticket with them. Literally everybody who, who, who opens a ticket with Infura is doing that right now. And so all of these things start to give me a hope and then a faith that ah this thing is going to be resolved. I've already done so much of this stuff before I even went on, on the live stream, and, and and so what a blessing it would be for me for me to end the, the, this process and end this live stream and have everything back up and working. And even if that isn't the case, then I can continue to run through this condition because right now I'm kind of feeling pretty good. It doesn't really feel like that's a big issue. I actually do feel like it's going to play itself out and that the wheels are in motion for that resolution, but. 
if for some reason the 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 there was a new condition that came up so maybe the the new condition that that came up for me is someone in my community will get upset that i'm live streaming rather than fixing the issue so they, they, this is probably not going to happen, but what I'm doing is addressing just a subtle fear because I want to make sure that I'm wholly in emotional alignment with the outcome that I'm looking for. So if somebody in my community gets upset that I'm live streaming, what are the ways that, that I could handle that? Well, I could feel my big feelings is what I would do first. I could... Um, respond to them in a, as articulate and emotionally balanced way as possible and give them the situation and talk to them about all the things that I had already done before I went on the live stream, I could express to them that for me, doing these live streams gives me so much energy and that energy allows me to be incredibly productive in the project and to be able to get more done for the project. And that has allowed me to attract really interesting phone calls that, uh, the, the, this week and, and things that are ultimately going to be beneficial to what we're building as a community. And, 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 and so by live streaming, it wasn't that I was shirking responsibility and not fixing an issue before I came on the live stream i did all of the things that that i've said in order to set the wheels in motion of having this fixed but the live stream for me was a commitment that i made to myself a commitment i made to the community that wants to tune in at 3 p.m central every single day and, and ultimately it's an experiment. This is an experiment for me in rendering reality. If I can talk about the things that I'm interested in, if I can give full expression to who I am, the fears, worries, concerns I have, but also the ambitions and hopes and faith that I have, then, then I believe that that will call in the energetic circumstances that ultimately make the projects that I'm working on as successful as they can be. And so ultimately, that what am I doing? I'm I'm saying how I could handle that and I'm feeling better about it. I'm feeling more energized. And so I just keep cycling through this process until I feel emotionally balanced, until I feel like, you know what, that is the solution. That is how I would handle it. So let's go back to the outline and let's just go through a couple of other sample conditions. So first, at the top of a sheet of paper, we're just going to say name the condition. And remember, the condition is whatever your current state is, whatever the frustration is, whatever the emotion is, wh wh whatever the situation or scenario is, you just name that. And then you list out what are all the ways that you could handle that. And the most important thing is you're not looking for the best answer. What you're looking for is creating a safe container where you can say whatever you want to say the, the, this, this is actually how could you handle this all bad ideas accepted be, be, because when you can vent your bad ideas in a safe forum within a journal it you, you're not going to enact them in the world the the energy impulse that would move you into a bad decision like that just isn't going to happen because you're going to have exhausted some of the tentacles of that so again, one of the examples was if I'm running out of money, well, how how can I handle that? I can find a new client. I can get a higher paying job. I can reduce expenses. I can go recycle cans. I, I can call the SBA and see if they have any opportunities. I could join a temp agency. I could get a remote job. I could join Upwork. So, so you're just listing all the possible things and then you're looking for resonance as you feel your big feelings and, and find balance in your body, you're going to resonate with the thing that is meant for you, that has the most energy, and that is going to be most effective when you when you take action on it. So here's an example of, of me listing bad ideas. But again, this is shadow work. This is a safe container where I can list bad ideas. So let's say the condition is I'm mad at my girlfriend. Well, how could I handle that? Remember, I'm not actually doing this. I'm just kind of fantasizing about doing it to transmute the energy. I could yell. I could break up. I could eat chocolate cake. I could eat a bowl of cereal. I could go for a walk. I, I could put Nirvana on and scream in my car. I, I, I could go and key somebody's car. So, so whatever my spiritual compass, which is the thing that's ordering my thoughts, whatever comes to, to the forefront of the movie screen of my brain, I'm listing that up out until I, until I get to some something like, 
I could have a conversation. I could own my part in this. I could recognize, ah, actually, I am somewhat responsible for that. I could re I could apologize to my girlfriend for the part that I'm responsible about. I, I could get really clear in what I want to communicate and how much I love my girlfriend and make sure that I communicate that to her, even if it means writing her a letter and, rub and, 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 and literally reading that aloud to her. You, you know, so ultimately, as you get through the bad ideas, good ideas start to come to the surface. And, and the cool thing is that if you do this on a regular basis, your natural set point will be to just go to the good ideas. But if I get really frustrating, first, I have to work through the bad ideas until I can get to the good ones. So by allowing shadow expression, we're allowing ourselves to safely express bad ideas, um, which prevents us from acting them out. You, you, you know, people who don't do shadow work, who don't understand the depths of what they're capable of, are the ones that end up enacting them. You know, if you've ever heard Jordan Peterson talk about his study of the Nazis and, and how could the Nazis go and do all of these atrocities? Well, well, it's be it's because. Germans at that time hadn't really explored their their shadow and, and and because they didn't have an understanding of what they were capable of they were able to fall into the totalitarian tiptoe where 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 they they just kind of kept accepting a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and and, and ultimately they were trying to see oh it'll get better at some point but it just kept getting worse and worse and worse until they were committing the worst atrocities that you could commit when you are fully aware of your shadow and your shadow is processed, you won't take action on that because you will know where that ultimately leads to. And this process for me often leads to a point where, where the absurdity of some of the bad ideas that I come from make me laugh so hard that, that it actually shifts me into a, a focus that's more positive and, and has more actionable solutions. So the way that you apply this is you just pull out a legal pad or journal or, or a Google Doc like I just did, and you go through this process until you land on the next good step or until you literally cannot think of any other options for how you could handle something. And when you get to the place where you literally can't think of another way that you could handle that situation, then you tune into yourself, maybe take a few deep breaths. Just notice what's happening in your body. And if you haven't landed on a solution yet, you say, well, is there another condition here? Because sometimes you'll go down the rabbit hole of deeper conditions. Sometimes it'll be, well, actually, I don't really care about that thing anymore, but I don't have any friends. Or, or I don't care about that thing any, any, anymore, but my my car insurance is out and I don't know how I'm going to renew it because I just got a ticket. So, so all of these things become conditions that ultimately are locking up your energy and your energy is your potential to land on solutions. And so as you tend to all of those things that were subconscious or living in the unconscious, as you bring them to conscious awareness and tend to them, you free up that energy to then go out as tentacles and find the solutions that you're looking for so that you can consistently make right actions. All right. So I talked about one of my coaches, Dex Gelfand. Um, he has the concept of the spiritual compass. And the spiritual compass is just this idea that your brain is going to serve up the exact right thing at the exact right moment. So don't judge a thought that comes up. If it comes up, it's the thing that you need to list. So no matter how ridiculous it comes from, if, you, if you're frustrated and you're saying, how could I handle this? And the thing that comes to you is eat a bowl of ice cream, throw ice cream at a window, it doesn't matter what you're saying. It, it, this is a fantasy, and and the these linear thoughts or, or, or these phrases are just ways for energy and, and emotion to escape your body. So just go with whatever your spiritual compass uh, goes with, be, be, because as you go from eating ice cream to throwing ice cream to, oh, I remember the this time that, that ice cream fell on my lap, you know, when my dad left us. Like, it's not always going to be that profound, but this is the way that your spiritual compass moves moves you down the rabbit hole of your subconscious unconscious brain and engaging with this process while you're paying attention to the sensations and emotions that are happening in your body can quickly move you out of a feeling of being stuck and towards more powerful results and so ultimately whether these process wherever these processes come from power processing is something that was co-opted by Scientology these processes however 
and many of the processes in Scientology and in many systems of, of spirituality are just tapping into ancient wisdom and genuine spiritual practices and hermeticism. And so if you go back to the root of the root of the root, Scientology doesn't own any of these processes. They were stolen from ancient wisdom and our, our, the opportunity that we have is that we can bring ancient wisdom back to the surface and the forefront and utilize these to be more effective, more loving, more aligned with truth in our lives. And so the goal is to reclaim techniques from all spiritual practices that, that allow us to have maximized personal growth and spiritual communion free from manipulation and distortion.